Gestalt Psychology, Wikipedia Audio Gestalt Psychology or Gestaltism Shape, Form is a philosophy of mind of the Berlin School of Experimental Psychology. Gestalt psychology is an attempt to understand the laws behind the ability to acquire and maintain meaningful perceptions in an apparently chaotic world. The central principle of Gestalt psychology is that the mind forms a global whole with self-organizing tendencies. This principle maintains that when the human mind forms a percept or Gestalt, the whole has a reality of its own, independent of the parts. The original famous phrase of Gestalt psychologist Kurt Kafka, the whole is other than the sum of the parts is often incorrectly translated as the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, and thus used when explaining Gestalt theory, and further incorrectly applied to systems theory. Kafka did not like the translation. He firmly corrected students who replaced other with greater. This is not a principle of addition, he said. The whole has an independent existence. In the study of perception, Gestalt psychologists stipulate that perceptions are the products of complex interactions among various stimuli. Contrary to the behaviorist approach to focusing on stimulus and response, Gestalt psychologists sought to understand the organization of cognitive processes. The Gestalt effect is the capability of our brain to generate whole forms, particularly with respect to the visual recognition of global figures instead of just collections of simpler and unrelated elements. Origins In psychology, Gestaltism is often opposed to structuralism. Gestalt theory, it is proposed allows for the deconstruction of the whole situation into its elements. The concept of Gestalt was first introduced in philosophy and psychology in 1890 by Christian von Ehrenfels. The idea of Gestalt has its roots in theories by David Hume, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Immanuel Kant, David Hartley, and Ernst Mach. Max Wertheimer's unique contribution was to insist that the Gestalt is perceptually primary, defining the parts it was composed from, rather than being a secondary quality that emerges from those parts, as von Ehrenfels's earlier Gestalt qualitat had been. Principle of totality The conscious experience must be considered globally because the nature of the mind demands that each component be considered as part of a system of dynamic relationships. Principle of psychophysical isomorphism A correlation exists between conscious experience and cerebral activity. Both von Ehrenfels and Edmund Husserl seem to have been inspired by Mach's work by Trichzur Analyzer M. Feindungen in formulating their very similar concepts of Gestalt and figural moment, respectively. On the philosophical foundations of these ideas see Foundations of Gestalt Theory. Early 20th century theorists, such as Kurt Kafka, Max Wertheimer and Wolfgang Kohler saw objects as perceived within an environment according to all of their elements taken together as a global construct. This Gestalt or whole form approach sought to define principles of perception seemingly innate mental laws that determined the way objects were perceived. It is based on the here and now, and in the way things are seen. Images can be divided into figure or ground. The question is what is perceived at first glance, the figure in front, or the background. These laws took several forms such as the grouping of similar, or proximate, objects together, within this global process. Although Gestalt has been criticized for being merely descriptive, it has formed the basis of much further research into the perception of patterns and objects, and of research into behavior, thinking, problem-solving and psychopathology. The founders of Gestalt Therapy, Fritz and Laura Perls, had worked with Kurt Goldstein, 
a neurologist who had applied principles of Gestalt psychology to the functioning of the organism. Laura Pearls had been a Gestalt psychologist before she became a psychoanalyst and before she began developing Gestalt therapy together with Fritz Pearls. The extent to which Gestalt psychology influenced Gestalt therapy is disputed, however. In any case it is not identical with Gestalt psychology. On the one hand, Laura Pearls preferred not to use the term Gestalt to name the emerging new therapy, because she thought that the Gestalt psychologists would object to it. On the other hand Fritz and Laura Pearls clearly adopted some of Goldstein's work. Thus, though recognizing the historical connection and the influence, most Gestalt psychologists emphasize that Gestalt therapy is not a form of Gestalt psychology. Mary Hennel noted in her presidential address to Division 24 at the meeting of the American Psychological Association, what Pearls has done has been to take a few terms from Gestalt psychology, stretch their meaning beyond recognition, mix them with notions often unclear and often incompatible from the depth psychologies, existentialism, and common sense, and he has called the whole mixture Gestalt therapy. His work has no substantive relation to scientific Gestalt psychology. To use his own language, Fritz Perls has done his thing, whatever it is, it is not Gestalt psychology with the Gestalt theory however, she restricts herself explicitly to only three of Perls' books from 1969 and 1972, leaving out Perls' earlier work, and Gestalt therapy in general. Phenomenon Experimental Analysis In relation to the totality principle any psychological research should take phenomena as a starting point and not be solely focused on sensory qualities, biotic experiment The school of Gestalt established a need to conduct real experiments that sharply contrasted with and opposed classic laboratory experiments. This signified experimenting in natural situations developed in real conditions, in which it would be possible to reproduce, with higher fidelity, what would be habitual for a subject. There are clinical applications of Gestalt psychology in the psychotherapeutic field, foremost in Europe, e.g. Gestalt theoretical psychotherapy. The school of Gestalt practiced a series of theoretical and methodological principles that attempted to redefine the approach to psychological research. This is in contrast to investigations developed at the beginning of the 20th century, based on traditional scientific methodology, which divided the object of study into a set of elements that could be analyzed separately with the objective of reducing the complexity of this object. Gestalt therapy The theoretical principles are the following. Based on the principles above the following methodological principles are defined. In the 1940s and 1950s, laboratory research in neurology and what became known as cybernetics on the mechanism of frog's eyes indicate that perception of gestalts is perhaps more primitive and fundamental than seeing as such. The key principles of Gestalt systems are emergence, reification, multi-stability, and invariance. This is demonstrated by the dog picture, which depicts a Dalmatian dog sniffing the ground in the shade of overhanging trees. The dog is not recognized by first identifying its parts, and then inferring the dog from those component parts. Instead, the dog appears as a whole all at once. Gestalt theory does not have an explanation for how this perception of a dog appears. Reification is the constructive or generative aspect of perception, by which the experienced percept contains more explicit spatial information than the sensory stimulus on which it is based. For instance, a triangle is perceived in picture A, though no triangle is there. 
In pictures B and D the eye recognizes disparate shapes as belonging to a single shape, in C a complete three-dimensional shape is seen, where in actuality no such thing is drawn. Theoretical Framework and Methodology Support from Cybernetics and Neurology Reification can be explained by progress in the study of illusory contours, which are treated by the visual system as real contours. Properties Emergence Reification Multistability Invariance Multistability is the tendency of ambiguous perceptual experiences to pop back and forth unstably between two or more alternative interpretations. This is seen for example, in the Necker cube and Rubens figure slash vase illusion shown here. Other examples include the three-legged Blavet and artist M. C. Escher's artwork and the appearance of flashing marquee lights moving first one direction and then suddenly the other. Again, Gestalt does not explain how images appear multistable, only that they do. Invariance is the property of perception whereby simple geometrical objects are recognized independent of rotation, translation, and scale, as well as several other variations such as elastic deformations, different lighting, and different component features. For example, the objects in A in the figure are all immediately recognized as the same basic shape, which are immediately distinguishable from the forms in B. They are even recognized despite perspective and elastic deformations as in C, and when depicted using different graphic elements as in D computational theories of vision, such as those by David Marr, have provided alternate explanations of how perceived objects are classified. Emergence, reification, multistability, and invariance are not necessarily separable modules to model individually but they could be different aspects of a single unified dynamic mechanism. Pragnans The fundamental principle of Gestalt perception is the law of pragnans, which says that we tend to order our experience in a manner that is regular, orderly, symmetrical, and simple. Gestalt psychologists attempt to discover refinements of the law of pragnans, and this involves writing down laws that hypothetically, allow us to predict the interpretation of sensation, what are often called Gestalt laws. A major aspect of Gestalt psychology is that it implies that the mind understands external stimuli as whole rather than the sum of their parts. The wholes are structured and organized using grouping laws. The various laws are called laws or principles, Depending on the paper where they appear but for simplicity's sake, this article uses the term laws. These laws deal with the sensory modality of vision. However, there are analogous laws for other sensory modalities including auditory, tactile, gustatory, and olfactory. The visual gestalt principles of grouping were introduced in Wordheimer. Through the 1930s and 40s Wordheimer, Kohler, and Kafka formulated many of the laws of grouping through the study of visual perception. Some of the central criticisms of Gestaltism are based on the preference Gestaltists are deemed to have for theory over data, and a lack of quantitative research supporting Gestalt ideas. This is not necessarily a fair criticism as highlighted by a recent collection of quantitative research on Gestalt perception. Other important criticisms concern the lack of definition and support for the many physiological assumptions made by Gestaltists and lack of theoretical coherence in modern Gestalt psychology. In some scholarly communities, such as cognitive psychology and computational neuroscience, Gestalt theories of perception are criticized for being descriptive rather than explanatory in nature. For this reason, they are viewed by some as redundant or uninformative. For example, Bruce, 
Green and Georgeson conclude the following regarding Gestalt theory's influence on the study of visual perception. The physiological theory of the Gestaltists has fallen by the wayside, leaving us with a set of descriptive principles, but without a model of perceptual processing. Indeed, some of their laws of perceptual organization today sound vague and inadequate. What is meant by a good or simple shape, for example? Gestalt psychologists find it is important to think of problems as a whole. Max Wertheimer considered thinking to happen in two ways, productive and reproductive. Criticisms Productive thinking is solving a problem with insight. This is a quick insightful unplanned response to situations and environmental interaction. Gestalt Views in Psychology Reproductive thinking is solving a problem with previous experiences and what is already known. This is a very common thinking. For example, when a person is given several segments of information, he slash she deliberately examines the relationships among its parts, analyzes their purpose, concept, and totality, he slash she reaches the aha moment, using what is already known. Understanding in this case happens intentionally by reproductive thinking. Fuzzy Trace Theory Use in Design Music Another Gestalt psychologist, Perkins, believes insight deals with three processes. Views going against the Gestalt psychology are Gestalt psychology should not be confused with the Gestalt therapy of Fritz Perls, which is only peripherally linked to Gestalt psychology. A strictly Gestalt psychology-based therapeutic method is Gestalt theoretical psychotherapy developed by the German Gestalt psychologist and psychotherapist Hans Jürgen Walter and his colleagues in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Other countries, especially Italy, have seen similar developments. Fuzzy Trace Theory, a dual process model of memory and reasoning, was also derived from Gestalt psychology. Fuzzy trace theory posits that we encode information into two separate traces, verbatim and gist. Information stored in verbatim is exact memory for detail while information stored in gist is semantic and conceptual. The effects seen in Gestalt psychology can be attributed to the way we encode information as gist. The Gestalt laws are used in user interface design. The laws of similarity and proximity can, for example, be used as guides for placing radio buttons. They may also be used in designing computers and software for more intuitive human use. Examples include the design and layout of a desktop's shortcuts in rows and columns. An example of the Gestalt movement in effect, as it is both a process and result, is a music sequence. People are able to recognize a sequence of perhaps six or seven notes, despite them being transposed into a different tuning or key. Similarities between Gestalt phenomena and quantum mechanics have been pointed out by, among others, chemist Anton Amen, who commented that similarities between Gestalt perception and quantum mechanics are on a level of a parable yet may give useful insight nonetheless. Physicist Elio Conti and co-workers have proposed abstract, mathematical models to describe the time dynamics of cognitive associations with mathematical tools borrowed from quantum mechanics and has discussed psychology experiments in this context. A similar approach has been suggested by physicists David Bohm, Basil Hilly, and philosopher Pavo Polkanen with the notion that mind and matter both emerge from an implicate order. The models involve non-commutative mathematics, 
such models account for situations in which the outcome of two measurements performed one after the other can depend on the order in which they are performed a pertinent feature for psychological processes, as it is obvious that an experiment performed on a conscious person may influence the outcome of a subsequent experiment by changing the state of mind of that person. Quantum Cognition Modeling